Um, my name is Joan Farini Mundy, and I'm the um, Assistant Director of the National Science Foundation with responsibility for education and human resources. So I'm, um, I'm the lead person for the part of the National Science Foundation that funds uh, activities in education. Part of my vision um, as the leader of this uh, directorate is to enhance and expand our research emphasis and our research identity. We really want to be seen as an agency that is um, a central player in terms of providing support to the nation's uh, best researchers and the best ideas that they might have to advance science education. Actually, we call it uh, STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So in this year's fiscal 13 budget request, which is our public way here of, of being able to set forth a direction, we've laid out uh, something that we've called a, a STEM education research and development uh, core. So we've selected four, um, four emphasis areas for this core. Those are uh, STEM learning, which would be the place for, for perhaps more basic R&D about all aspects of STEM learning. That piece of the core would be interested in advancing our national international knowledge base uh, to better understand STEM learning, particularly in evolving contexts as technologies are available, as uh, social networking becomes available, uh, as students have new opportunities for engaging in learning inside and outside of school. How does that happen? Our second priority is uh, STEM learning environments. Many will say, well, you can't separate STEM learning from STEM learning environments, and I understand that. But we have a long tradition at NSF of investing in uh, what I would call development. So this R&D around instructional environments, learning environments, is meant to further our understanding in an R&D context of uh, what kinds of outcomes are possible, what's, what works for which audiences under which conditions, uh, as researchers bring forward their new ideas and innovations for instructional settings and learning settings. The third area is broadening participation uh, and cr increasing diversity in the STEM workforce, an area that is a, is a serious challenge for the country, a place where if we don't build a coherent body of knowledge about how to best engage uh, all types of learners from all backgrounds, from all ethnic ethnicities, and particularly those from groups that are underrepresented in science and engineering, um, women, uh, persons of color, persons with disabilities. Uh, we're very interested in making sure that um, there's a research base to help us really understand what kinds of institutional settings, what kinds of instructional approaches, what kinds of um, support mechanisms make a difference. And then finally, our fourth area that we've laid out is um, the development of the STEM professional workforce. So as I mentioned to you, we do a lot of investment in fellowships and traineeships and grants and scholarships directly to students, but now we'd like to sort of pair that with a strong research and development base that takes a look at how we grow to understand a person's development in a STEM career. Uh, so we would like to know much more, I think, for example, about graduate education in the sciences. What kinds of graduate education interventions really can make a difference uh, and position a graduate student to be a leading scientist for the future, where there's interdisciplinarity involved or computation and so on. So what we're hoping across those four areas is to, is to get the field excited about uh, coming to us with proposals that will help us to build a more coherent and um, accumulated knowledge base in the country for those areas.